James's meal. So that's pecans on top of the pumpkin soup. Um, and there's these chips to go on this sandwich. That's hummus there. And that's the chips. I'm going to talk about this, that, and I know James has plenty to talk about this morning or the, this afternoon. I'm pretty out of it. I um, got a migraine last night. And I, uh, You're still so suffering the effects. I right? was dealing with that all night long. and I actually don't mind when I get them at night because I you can manage to bit. sleep a little bit. Um, so it's, it's not as bad. But And this is what did it. So I okay. should have known better, and they were very much not worth it. They, they're these, not good. They might have been the worst potato chips I've ever tried in my life. They're and, pretty close. Yeah, like I can't recall worse. I gotta say. Yeah. I mean, you, I, think, you know, I enjoyed them. Okay, especially like well, you found a good way to eat them. Around these sandwiches, the, sandwiches. the hummus, yeah. the hummus kind of smooths them out. They get a, you get a little crunch from them, like croutons, yeah. and then, I, yeah, I put them with cucumbers. I, I ate yeah. a, a bit of the, the. I wasn't sure if you ate the um, bell pepper the last time, I, so I, gave I ate it some to you anyway. And I sure. gave, uh, I didn't have them on the sandwich, but I was feeding a little bit to the dogs. The dogs. They were, love it. Uh, so anyway. Um, the bell peppers. I think every dog loves them. Not the chips. Not the chips. I, you know, a few crumbs fell on the floor. They, have they were having none in of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, which is why I shouldn't have eaten them. Okay. I guess there was enough in there. I had tried some of that stir fry that I made you the other day and it had onions in it. I tried not to get the onions in my stuff that I ate. And I was okay and I thought, oh, maybe I'm okay now. See, I always do that. I think, oh, maybe I'm okay now to eat this because I would like to eat everything, you know, but I just uh, Onions I are good for a person, yeah. primarily, but they don't do well by me. I can eat garlic, not onions. So, let's well, garlic talk is about better than onions, but Yeah, it is. It's anyway. tastier, but it's tastier too. The force of nature, the dry too. And I don't know why this is called the dry too. I'm not sure because this area was not dry at all. Um, it d didn't make sense to me the title, but maybe uh, it's somebody else knows. I'm not yeah. sure. Um, so this was filmed in Australia. I've been watching a lot of great things from Australia lately. Um, and well, today I'm watching Moonlighting, which that gets to the stack on top of all of this for sure. Because you know I like Moonlighting, but I'll talk about that at another time. Um, so anyway, this is about, it's a it's good story, it's good mystery. So there's um, these women that they work together, they go out on this business, um, what do you call it, where you have to work together, like team building exercise, oh, right? Yeah. They're on a hike <laughs> and they have a compass and they have a map and they're trying to get to some place or whatever and they're trying to work together and like get these flags along the way that they have to work together to get or whatever. So anyway, these people do not work well together. I can't imagine they would work well with anybody. Want to be a manager's are, leaders. You know? Yeah, they're mm -hmm. total, uh, well, not all of them were aggressive types, but the two main ones were, and yeah, they were head to head the whole way. Anyway. Um, I just want to say in that connection, I used to play what was called Fritz Nooners with management people from the main management people in the city of Lethbridge. Noon hour. I worked evenings, so uh, they'd come over and during their daytime, the noon hour. And I could always tell a new guy whether he's a management guy or not. He wouldn't pass. Mm -hmm. There was, maybe there was the occasional exception. The exception where there, there'd be the occasional worker who wouldn't pass, but he was a wannabe management. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just going to end it with, uh, and pass it over to Pauline. You know, they'd always be saying, there's no I in team, but there's an M and an E, and uh, that's the way management people are. Yeah. There's an M and an E in management, too. Anyway. Not bad. 
So. <laughs> two M's in two E's. So. Uh, I actually like Russell Crowe as an actor, and he did a good job in this. This is a military sort of film, and um, I think everybody did a good job in this. So, it's I mean it's not my sort of thing. I don't like watching the military sort of stuff, but whatever. It, they did a good job. So if you like watching military movies, you would like watching that. Probably. Little Woods. This is about some real um, mess ups. They're uh, into dealing drugs and running pills across the Canadian border and all this sort of stuff. And yeah, they're just just mess ups and honestly, into Canada or from Canada well maybe both it's from Canada okay I think but anyway, Makes sense. it's probably in the middle. yeah I don't know I think it was made in Canada honestly okay. but I'm not sure anyway it feels like something made in Canada which usually I, I like um, Canadian movies. I, I honestly, I usually like them more than the American movies. Um, but whatever, I'm not into the whole big loud sounds and whatever. I like a, a interesting story and whatever. But um, this one, they just didn't flesh out the story enough for. It just seemed a little soap opera-ish and a little whatever. It just wasn't. It didn't quite make it. So that's it. So I'm sure James has plenty to talk about. What with the election and stuff. So you have over 20 minutes if the battery holds. That's always there. Well, as soon as I mention the dumpster, uh, yeah. we might want to have jungle. Hey, folks. You south of the border, not quite down Mexico way. Shame on you. You guys are useless. Okay! Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on both uh, political parties. A particular shame on the Republican Party back in 2016. You guys should have Got Don, Donald Trump loose. He said, you run on your own. We're running on our own. Yeah, neither of you guys would have got elected. But now you've got <laughs> head of your party, Republican. <laughs> Apparently a convicted felon. <laughs> wow! Wow! Words fail me. Even cuss words. <laughs> we'll, we'll maintain a few seconds of silence. Oh, I understand. You know, I was hearing some news reports that might have actually been semi-true. Uh, that uh, it was almost like record levels, hatred for both candidates. Republican Party, you had you, you you actually rolled over for a hostile takeover by Donald Trump, who's an agent of the Russians, and uh, the Democratic Party almost rolled over way back when, 2016, to a hostile takeover by another Russian agent called Bernie Sanders, and uh, the uh, left wing got what they wanted, which is a plastering at the polls. You guys have been doing this ever since George McGovern. Well, not ever since. Because every so occasionally you haven't been able to put up your patsy candidates. George McGovern, plastered. Jimmy Carter barely, barely beat a lame duck candidate incumbent. Jerry Ford just squeaked by, and then he wasn't able to use wasn't able to use the advantages of incumbency himself. 
in 1980 and got absolutely plastered by a B-grade actor and a, it's a plain flunky in Ronald Reagan. Boom! I should mention, yeah, I mentioned McGovern got plastered by Nixon. Absolutely plastered in 72. Nixon set the record for uh, the most one-sided election, as I recall, 1972. I was around. Dates go back that far. Then uh, Bill Clinton actually wins an election. Oh, the left wingers in the uh, not just in the Democratic Party, outside of the Democratic Party, outside of the United States, here in Canada, everywhere around the world, can't stand Bill Clinton. Why? Because he was electable. Wow, got elected twice. Then they got Obama in. Wow, Obama was one of the most gutless presidents when it comes to foreign policy. Short-sighted. Oh, look at me! I'm getting out of Iraq. Unscheduled. 2011. You hear that, all you lefties over on this side, lefties? You hear that, all you terrorists? Just wait, and you can get go crazy in 2011 in Iraq. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Obama would have got his hindquarters handed to him. Via his throat. <laughs> The Republicans would have shoved it down his throat if uh, the Republicans hadn't done their usual thing, which is the economic meltdown. If they're in for eight years in a row, they have, at least have, and this uh, goes back to um, it goes back. It goes back to 1921, <laughs> over a hundred years. Okay? They're in for uh, eight years in a row. They're going to have an economic meltdown. At least a stock market crash. Yeah, okay. You don't believe me? Check up the stats. Yeah. Don't check it up on the internet. Try to pull something out of a library, okay? Yeah. Don't get involved with fake news. And I don't care which side of the, uh, which side of the uh, political spectrum uh, you get the fake news from. Don't bother. At least don't bother me with it. All you stupid lefties in your own echo chamber, all you stupid right-wingers in your own echo chamber, actually do a little bit of research instead of having your your pig slop served up to you. Stupid chimps. Okay. So, Obama, whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa. now uh, Kamala Harris. I don't know how far left-wing she is, but uh, this person, is she a Russian agent too, like Bernie? Because uh, I was hearing about a week ago on a right-wing uh, radio station, AM, as I recall, AM radio station, there's a guy on. Okay, Bernie's out there. You know, this guy on the right-wing station was a Jew, or so he claimed. He said Bernie's out there saying uh, if he's been telling Kamala Harris and suggesting maybe that Kamala was giving him a willing ear to cut off all funding to the Israelis. Wow, you know, like just before an election, for like what's military? What were? Uh, for what? I for what? I don't know if he specified. Oh. Anyway. It doesn't matter. Like if uh, you know, if they if they uh, cut off funding for military and keep on funding humanitarian or, or whatever, uh, you know, like the Israelis have to spend money here. Yeah, you're they're, right. They're, no matter what they fund, or uh, they just the other would just shuffle money around to do work. So all of a sudden, now I can remember saying uh, to uh, people, anyone who cared to listen, maybe even Paul, a while back, long while back, saying he was like. Fox Network has been playing slow pitch with uh, Bernie Sanders. Uh, someone was saying, and I suspect it was true, that the only Democrat who got any coverage from the Fox Network was Bernie Sanders. Well, Fox Network's right wing. Why is that? 
because Bernie Sanders way over in the left wing. Why is that? Well, they wanted to divide the Democratic Party. They wanted to divide the center and a left wing vote in the United States. There you go, Bernie. We're not going to ask you about your communist past or your socialist past or your kibbutz past. Past. We're not going to ask you about that because we want you to get nominated. And then all of a sudden, it's going to be hardball, and we're going to be doing a Roger Clemens thing. We it'll be dust back pitches. Get some food uh, for the baby. Uh, dust off pitches, you know, like uh, we'll be aiming right at your jaw. Let's see if you'll bail out. Hmm? Roger Clemens. Here you go, Bernie. Pull your face out of that once he got nominated. Because they'd be asking him about his past. And you know, like, uh, uh, I'm not making any secret about it. I think I'm the first person to figure out why, you know, like I was looking at an, a cover of an Economist magazine, recent one, about Rupert Murdoch. Why is Rupert Murdoch, Economist mag is like the Wall Street Journal only glossier for uh, England. And what's what's they were saying? Why Rupert Murdoch uh, on Fox Network? Why are they uh, you know like supporting Trump? Why are they uh, why is uh, why are they supporting someone who's soft on Russia? All this sort of stuff. Why, why, you know like he's. He's going against uh, the interest of his uh, class. <laughs> yeah, you don't understand. There's no class with Rupert Murdoch of uh, any sort. He was rescued by one particular bank. I believe it was 30 years ago. I suspect it was uh, during the economic fallout of the 12-year Republican administration in 1991 into 92. And uh, one bank, and uh, if I check it out if there's enough records uh, preserved I'll find out that uh, where that money was coming from was from Russia mafia they had mafia actually incidentally before uh, the fall of the Soviet Union one guy one Russian guy I ran into recently said to understand they had mafia back then when you've got the kind of controls on the economy and a, a well poorly performing economy like you had under the commies you're going to have mafia. People are going to be paying stuff under the table to get this, that, and the other thing. Instead of having to uh, line up for food the way honest people did. Yeah. Anyway, Russian mafia bailed Rupert Murdoch out. And the, the thing is, you know, like, uh, they'll bail you out. And they really don't, you don't even have to get, give a, a return much less with interest. Why? Because they demand payment in kind. Eh? Payment in kind. And if you don't come up with a payment, they are like the worst uh, of, uh, you know, like uh, people who, uh, uh, loan sharks, because <laughs> they'll kill. Hey, baby. And, you know, like Rupert Murdoch, he's well over 90 years. I think Donald Dump, uh, is getting up to 80. His uh, his age and years has gone past his IQ. And for you folks that don't understand, 80 is not a high IQ. Uh, you know, 100 is average. But anyway, yeah, and understand. You know, like, oh, Donald Trump's smart. Yeah, he's smarter than his supporters. But that doesn't make him smart. Are you getting that, you supporters of Donald Trump? You guys are dumb. Capital. D, capital U, capital M, capital B, and another capital B after that. Dumb! Well, and there would have been a lot of people that really weren't his supporters that voted for him, though. I'm talking about his supporters, okay? Okay. And anyone who voted for him, even over Kamala Harris, is a, a dingbat. Okay. Understand, you folks down in the United States, I, I ran across a, a dude, I'm not going to mention his wife, she didn't seem that smart, but... Uh, they were from Alaska, and they were walking in a national park here in Canada with their dog off leash. And it was a relatively big dog. Was it a German Shepherd? Well, they had two dogs. Oh, two. I, and there were, was they, one on I leash and one off? They, they weren't German Shepherds. I don't think yeah. they were. Anyway, they were big enough for me not to want to say anything about it in case they unleashed the dogs on them. Anyway, turns out they were from Alaska. And boy, oh boy, 
they were saying they were in the medical profession. They knew all about a certain plague that hit here four years ago, hit the whole world. And uh, they were saying, oh man, the left wing, they were in the United States, elsewhere, presumably here in Canada, they were into infringing people's liberties like no tomorrow, like never before, because people weren't allowed to travel freely and they had to wear masks. Oh my God, you know, like uh, what the kind of freedom that was really denied that kind of worries me is people were, uh, weren't allowed, millions of people around the world uh, weren't allowed the freedom of living any further because they died of a particular plague. That's what worries me. Anyway, this guy was all up in, up in, arm, almost in arms about it. The wife finally pulled the plug on him and uh, had him out. I was <laughs> trying to defuse the situation without totally knuckling under to this knucklehead. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to dwell too much on that, but uh, this is the kind of supporters that Donald Dump has, you know. I, I was refraining from telling him, uh, the big philosopher, uh, not the uh, not the economic philosopher, that would be Adam Smith, but uh, the philosopher general of uh, capitalism, this guy called John Locke, and what he said was, your freedom ends at the end of your nose. Kind of applies to this plague that had been going down here, but yeah, there they were, no leash on their dogs in a national park, spreading whatever plague they might have been carrying around. They were medical professionals. Might have been caught before they went on holidays and stuff like that. Really sp spreading the gospel up here. And uh, I, sh I should call it not... Uh, the gospel is kind of like... It. They were evangelizing, but it was more like cack evangelizing, which is... Uh, evan evangelism, that means... The EU means good news, but CACA means bad. We <laughs> keep spreading the bad news. Anyway, back to bad news. Okay, now you folks, uh, you sitting there, Donald Trump, he's all for freedom. No, he ain't, okay? He's all for doing uh, the Russians' bidding. How much time? Six minutes. Six minutes. Russians' bidding. He's not for freedom. There's all sorts of people in the wings waiting to take over the United States like set up a dictatorship, okay? Donald Trump has been musing, I think, since 2016. Let's not have another election again. And people will be going, yay! Okay, yeah. You don't have another election, all you people, yay! You know, like, we'll have freedom. No, you won't. You know, freedom is a, when we're talking about political freedom, is democracy. It's actually having regular elections. Yay! Let's not have another election again. Because we're going to be... A, no, it won't be you guys in the cat's bird seat. It'll be a dictator in the cat's bird seat. And then you guys have got to really knuckle under. <laughs> That's what happens. And you never know what that dictator's going to call. You know, like uh, Adolf Hitler back in 1933, very early, I think it was something like January the 30th, the 31st, 1933, he didn't win a majority, but he won, I think, a plurality. And uh, Hindenburg, I think he was the chancellor, chancellor uh, he appointed him head of the uh, German state. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yay! Oh, yeah, they were cheering for Hitler. And then 12 years later, you know, it was the, I thought I was original. I, I called it the, not the thousand year Reich, but the dozen year Reich. Okay. And uh, what's it, Dutzend Year Reich, not Tausend Year Reich in German. And, uh, yeah, you know, with the Russians right in Berlin. And Berlin, you know, like, who was it that uh, was wa walked into Berlin? And he said, uh, yeah, it was, uh, what was it, something Allen Brook. Allen Brook. They, they made his name when they kind of made him a lord or something like that in England or baron. Allen Brook, they made it one name. Anyway, he walked into Berlin after <laughs> Allies they took it over. It might have been for the Potsdam Conference. And he was saying he just couldn't believe the desolation. He said pictures didn't do it justice. You had to be there and kind of see it in panorama. In a panorama, <laughs> just 180 degrees. Yay! Yeah! Oh, yeah. He said the people looked, <laughs> I don't think it was sullen, surly. And I'm going, 
well, you know, like they they asked for, <laughs> they asked, they were, they were, wow, you know, <laughs> all for Hitler. And all you people are going, oh, all for Trump. You don't know what this guy's going to pull on you, you stupid putzes. It won't be freedom. The best, I think you guys can hope for, if this guy's as bad as I'm worried he is, is that the U.S. military, sometimes the military in third world nations, and you're sitting in a third world nation now, the United States, you got a third world leader. What they'll do is they'll just get rid of a dictator and uh, declare martial law and uh, try to come up with a democratic solution again. Uh, after a while, after they do a little bit of house cleaning, and I'm telling you, the U.S. military, it won't be the CIA assassinating the guy, it'll be the U.S. military. They will take over if Trump is as bad as I worry is. And uh, because, you know, Trump's well, basically in the Ukraine, you say to the Russians, hey, you, you do what you like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the American military, the United States is, understand, economically, Russia is less powerful than Canada. And Canada is about the tenth of the economic power of the United States. The U.S. military, what are we doing rolling over for this idiot, this little putz called Putin? Putz Putin. What are we doing? It, believe me, it, 2016 to 2020, it took him a lot of restraint to not overthrow that little tin pot, that fat little tin pot dictator, uh, Trump. So, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's a name of very nice name. Anyway, I'll continue. Am I ranting? I am venting. And I'm telling you, I, I guess I am ranting. But you guys, down in the United States, pretty well all you guys, all you guys, all you guys that are for Kamala Harris, you stupid putzes. Like uh, the day before the election, or two days before, she's in Detroit saying to the Muslim population there, hey, you know, like...